Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Today we're going to take a quick look at keyboard shortcuts and I'm going to show you a few of the ones that I use all the time. Keyboard shortcuts have been around for as long as there have been desktops. So many of these have been around for years and years and years. Some of them are rather new and some of them are unique to the Linux desktop and a few I'm going to show you today are unique to the Cinnamon desktop because we're going to be using that for our example. So I'm going to put in the description a couple of links here. One of them is to this. This is uh, shortcuts for the Cinnamon desktop, but this website has shortcuts for many other desktops as well. And they also show you uh, what sort of uh, other desktops these shortcuts work on. So it shows you cross compatibility, which is really cool. And another thing that we're going to talk about for a little bit here in the video is some shortcuts that you can use in your web browser, particularly Firefox, although most of the shortcuts available in Firefox also work in Google Chrome or whatever else you're going to be using as well. So let's get to our desktop. And I have a lovely picture of the city of Norfolk, Virginia here, which is where I grew up. Actually, I grew up on the side of the water this picture is taken from in Portsmouth. And this is a lovely view of Norfolk around the holidays when all of the buildings downtown are lit up and it's very pretty. Okay, the first shortcut I'm going to show you is Alternate F2. And this works on pretty much every Linux desktop and it will allow you to execute a command. You can either execute a single command here or you can use this to open up a piece of software. So in this case I'm going to use this to start a program called Screen Key. And what Screen Key will do is it's going to allow you to see what I type on the screen as we type here. So hopefully that will be a help. The first thing I'm going to show you I don't need Screen Key for because I think it's the most important one to know and that is what the little little key with the windows on it does. And it's now called the Windows Key because most keyboards have it labeled as Windows, but actually that's the super key or the meta key or meta key, however you say that. And it usually opens up the main menu for the desktop. If it doesn't, then I go in and set it to open up the main menu for the desktop because I am so used to using that key to get to a menu. Once you're in the menu, you can use the arrow keys to move around within that menu. That's an important skill to, to know simply because of the fact that if for some reason your mouse quits working and you want to get to the mouse settings or restart the computer or something, then you'll have to know how to do that. So I can move around within that menu. And of course you can start typing and open up a program as well. So in our case, I'm going to open up Nemo, which is the file manager. So here's Nemo and that gives us something to look at here and I want to show you a couple of other shortcuts. Uh, so let's open up another program. Any program will do. It really doesn't make any difference. Let's find the archive manager and then I press enter. And so I have a couple of programs opened up. So I'm going to show you some of the pretty standard desktop features. Alternate tab will move you back and forth between programs and show you the programs in a little preview or just give you a box to let you know what you're switching between. That's very useful when you have a lot of programs open on the desktop. So we're going to go back to Nemo and here's another very useful, I mean extremely useful shortcut that I use all the time. Alternate F4 that closes a program. On the Cinnamon desktop or pretty much all of the Linux desktops that have uh, multiple workspaces enabled, you can use alternate control and the left or right arrow keys to get from desktop to desktop. So I have three workspaces enabled on this machine and that will take me back and forth. So once again, say alt control plus alternate plus an arrow will do that. And on the Cinnamon desktop, we have some other functionality that we can do alternate control and the up arrow will give us a, an overview of all of the desktops that are open on the system and then you can use arrow keys to move back and forth between the desktops and you can also drag and drop applications from one desktop to another so if for some reason we want Nemo to be on desktop 2 you can do that and that is how that's done if we 
choose the alternate control in the down arrow, this gives us what's known as the Expo mode, which shows us all of the different things that are running on the desktop. So if we had a bunch of programs running here, let's go ahead and just open up Nemo again so you can see. Now we have all of those programs and then we can come in here and close them with the mouse. So that is a good thing to know. Okay, so back to the home here. And I'll show you a couple of more pretty standard shortcuts. To get to a menu, you can just uh, put in alternate and you'll see that some of those letters are underlined. And so if I hit alternate F, that takes me to the file menu and then I can use the arrow keys to page through these menus. You'll also notice here that we have lots of shortcuts that are defined next to whatever we're looking at there. So if it's something you do all the time, then you can uh, learn that shortcut for yourself. But the one that I wanted to show you here was, uh, let's create a file so that we can play with. We'll create a new document, an empty document, and it comes up and allows us to rename it. I'm going to hit Escape, and Escape will take us out of that. To get back to it, if you want to rename a file, all you have to do is highlight the file, and you don't even need to use the mouse to do that because you can use your arrow keys to move around. You can use the tab keys within the application to move around with different things on the menu. Okay, so we'll find our file once again if I want to rename it then that's alternate F2 no it's not sorry that is control F2 oh actually just F2 we don't even need to do any of the uh, the function key the uh, control or the alternate key it didn't make any difference duh sorry about that anyway it's just F2 to get to that so let's rename it junk and then enter and now it'll take the file name control and C will copy that onto the clipboard and if I change the focus here with the mouse and hit control V now it'll put it on the desktop for me if I don't want that file anymore I can just highlight it and then use the delete key to put it in the trash can so now it went straight to the trash can and if we come back over here to this one this time around, we don't want to put it in the trash can. We want to make it completely disappear. You can bypass the trash can by hitting the uh, shift key and then hit the delete key. And now it will prompt you, do you really want to permanently get rid of that? And I say, well, yes. And now that's gone. So those are a few file operations that I end up doing all the time. To select everything in a pay, uh, on a screen, control A, that's really useful. Also, another thing that you can do is if you want to go through a list of things and you want to select just a few of them, then you can use control and then use your mouse key. And then you can select the items that you want from the menu like that. Okay. And then on certain lists, you can um, click control and shift and it'll do this. Let's see if it works here. So control shift and then I come down and now I click here and yeah see it let me see if I can do that where it makes more sense. Okay so control and shift I'm gonna click the first one control shift and then I just want this one you see those top three are highlighted so if you're doing a list and you want everything from here down that's good to know as well of course it didn't show you that with uh, screen key but that's a, another shortcut that I use all the time. All right, so you kind of get the idea here. There's plenty of ways that you can do things uh, with shortcuts on the desktop, and you never even have to touch a mouse or open a menu. There's a couple that I can't show you uh, because they will actually take me out of the desktop or they conflict with programs that are already running. So you'll notice here that I have my screen capture software running and it uses control R as an accelerator to start and stop the video. However, if I used control R on a desktop without 
the screen capture running, then that would restart the desktop. So if your icons go wonky or something goes crazy, it stops responding, you can try that. And that will just kind of reload the desktop in the background. Also, alternate control and backspace. That will log you out of your session and take you back to the login screen. So if your desktop goes a little crazy, that's uh, something else to do. Of course, F1 will get you some help. In the case of Linux Mint, it takes you to where you can look at the user guides. And then alternate F4 closes an application. So let's switch over here to desktop 2. And I'm going to open up Firefox. And let's just for fun do that with the F2. Now here comes Firefox and we can talk a little bit about some of the things that you can do with your web browser. Uh, once again I do have that list of shortcuts that are specific to Firefox and I'm going to put that in the description. So just a few things that I use all the time. First of all I don't set Firefox up to show the menu bar. To get that just press alternate and it shows right up. To get to a particular menu for whatever reason just alternate and like alternate F and that'll take me to that menu if I need to get to it. Escape will get you out of that. To open up a new tab, control T. So let's open up a new tab and then we can just uh, use the tab key to go down through the page. So the first the first tab here will be uh, if we use the arrow uh, that's the search and if we tab once again, you see we're tabbing through different options there. Now we're down here on the page, and we can just move around. And the first tab should be, if I hit the arrow down, yep, the search within the page. So you, that's called tabbing through, by the way. And if you don't have a mouse, that's the way you would navigate a graphical page. And many, many years ago, it wasn't necessarily that every computer had a mouse, especially back in the DOS and Windows and very early uh, KDE days. So there you go. Okay, so let's open up an app. Let's open up a window here so we can show you some other things. So I've got Freedom Penguin open, and I've got a story that I want to look at. So if I wanted to look at Docker and microservices, I could open up that story right there. And to navigate. It's control and the left and right arrow key. So if I want to go back, I just click, uh, or rather, no, I'm sorry, it's alternate and the arrow key, and that will take me up a level. And then to go forward, alternate and the right arrow key. To reload a page, for whatever reason, F5, that will reload your page. If you want to put Firefox in a full screen mode, then you would hit F11. Now it fills the entire screen. Hit F11 again and you get back to normal. Uh, F12 opens the developer tools. If you need to look at the code for whatever reason, get into that sort of thing. There it is right there. F12 again makes that go away. So there are a ton of shortcuts here. A ton of shortcuts. To close a tab, it's Control W. So let's open the tab back up because what I want to do is I want to show you how to switch between tabs, which is control and tab. So now you can switch between tabs. I use this a lot of times when I'm doing videos. I will open up some tabs, uh, open up some things that I want you guys to see, and then I'll full screen the application. Doesn't want to completely full screen right now for whatever reason, but. Well, maybe because I don't have anything open. Let's open something. All right, try that again. All right, yeah, I'll put it in full screen, and then I will use the tabs to move back and forth. So all you see is the web page on the video. Pretty cool, huh? The only problem with that is, is that I keep, what I'll do is, is I'll take my mouse. I'm always moving my mouse all over the screen. I come up here, and then that shows up. So that kind of blows the effect, but you get the idea. Another one that I use a great deal in Firefox is the control key and the plus and minus keys. This makes things bigger and smaller so you can scale them on the screen. This is an old, that goes way way back 
used to be able to do that in Netscape years ago, which was one of the reasons that I started using Netscape over Internet Explorer way back a long time ago. It was because you could scale the screen. You can also do that with the mouse, so you just hit the control key and then use your mouse scroll there. It tends to get kind of hung up when you do it with the mouse though. So I like to use the keyboard. I'm used to doing that as well. And that works in uh, Thunderbird Mail too. So if you open up Mail, uh, you can resize the, the fonts and make it bigger and easier to see or smaller so you can see more of the page, whichever works for you. And uh, to, if I just uh, sit here, if I just want to close all my tabs and get rid of it, Control W, or I can just hit Alternate F4 and it goes away. So you get the idea of how this works, okay? That's just a basic, basic introduction, and you can look through the uh, different keyboard shortcuts and find ones that work for you. So how do you set a keyboard shortcut? Because maybe you have something that you want to do all the time, but you, you know, don't have one that's set for your system. Well, pretty much every desktop has an application in it that will allow you to do this. So in this case, we're going to open up keyboards for Cinnamon. And this is pretty close to the same application that's used in the GNOME desktop, but I've never seen a, a desktop that didn't have the ability to do this. You can go through here and uh, see what shortcuts are set for everything. Um, if you see one that says XF86, that means it's set for the key that some keyboards have, or like my laptop, for instance, one of my laptops has keys across the top that you can launch the internet and launch a mail browser and all that kind of stuff and that's what they're looking for. So you can go through here and see what's set or you can change it but I'm going to go down here to custom uh, custom shortcuts. We're going to create one. So let's add a custom shortcut. Okay. So we're going to call this shortcut YouTube. Let's say that you're just a YouTube nut and you actually just go to YouTube more than anything else. So we're going to create one. And then we're going to use Firefox to open YouTube. Okay. And then the command is just Firefox. YouTube.com. So let's go ahead and add that. All right. And now we have to pick an accelerator key to make that work. So we go down here to one of these assignments, double click on that, click again, there we go, we'll just do this one, because it took it. Okay, so we're going to make uh, that alternate U. So now, alternate U will open up YouTube, once we click OK here. So here we go, Let's see if it worked. Yep, there you go. So you can set your own keyboard shortcuts to do whatever you want them to do. I hope that uh, gets you started on that. I want to thank Doug Barber, who is an Easy Linux client, for sending me a, an email and suggesting this video. There are hundreds more, gang. And there's probably hundreds more that I use that I have forgotten about to show you in this video. But this gives you a basic idea of how you can... Uh, make things go a lot faster using keyboard shortcuts and you can also check out the information that is listed in the description I gave you a couple of sites to start with you can look at and that's gonna about do it thanks for watching be sure and check out freedompenguin.com for very interesting stories about Linux we took a look at that while I was demonstrating shortcuts check out easy Linux on the web Big changes coming to Easy Linux on the web, gang. That website's about to get very interesting. You just wait and see. Also, check out Easy Linux on Facebook, and if you would, give it a like. So, I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut to stop this video as I wave bye-bye with my other hand. Bye-bye.